It is our last live episode of the 2023 regular season, and I, to use Matt's phrase, will be leaving no stones unturned. Let's go. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs for the last time in the 2023 regular season. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Sam Olber. Please support the show by following on your preferred audio platform. And you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. We are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Welcome in. If you notice the background, it is symbolic. It is symbolic to a season that is over. Okay. And I have a lot to say. I thought yesterday's episode after so much heartbreak and so much walk off, I felt the right thing to do was to keep it light, to keep it funny. Now I think we're past that point. Now I think it's time to let loose. And I have a lot of time and Matt and I will, will, We'll dig down and, and break up the pieces of this absolute massive collapse. We have all offseason to do it. We'll discuss David Ross. We'll discuss Jed Hoyer. We'll discuss what went wrong. We'll discuss why the bullpen continued to be fried and all the things that happened. But tonight, tonight is my time. And tonight is my time to discuss two men. Two men that have been getting on my nerves for a long time now. And I've hinted at it on the show. I've ranted about it on the show. And I've gotten a lot of heat because for whatever reason, these two men have almost a unanimous approval rating among Cubs fans. Well, that ends tonight. That ends tonight. There are plenty, and I mean plenty, of Cubs players that have been awesome this year. Excuse me. Plenty of Cubs players that have overperformed. Plenty of Cubs players that deserve a lot of credit. Jan Gomes, Justin Steele, Cody Bellinger, Seiya Suzuki down the stretch, Christopher Morel, Javier Assad. There is plenty, plenty of guys that I am absolutely proud of. Okay. But there are two men that have come up short consistently for a good long while now. The 2022 big free agent get for the Chicago Cubs was Marcus Stroman. The 2023 big get for the Chicago Cubs was Dansby Swanson. And I will preface what I'm about to say by saying these two men are not the reason why the Cubs are not going to the postseason. But with the money they're making and the expectations that we had, they should be the two men that drove us to the postseason. $50 million between them. When we signed Marcus Stroman, what were we told? Big game pitcher. Loves the bright lights. Wants to show out in Wrigley when it matters most. Dansby be Swanson, the ultimate winner. He's won in high school. He's won in college. He's won with the Braves. And all you heard with Dansby Swanson the first half of the season was, oh, poor Dansby, because, you know, he went to the Cubs and he wants to be a part of a winner. And this isn't what he signed up for. Well, let me tell you something. When this team started to win, he started to let us down. Since June 20th, Marcus Stroman has an ERA of 8 Point two nine. I'm going to say it again for those folks in the back. That's an 8.29 ERA the last three months of the season. And if you want to comment on here and say, come on, Sam, he was hurt. I promise you, you do not want to do that because I am in no mood for excuses. Javier Assad was much better than Marcus Stroman. There was no reason to push him if he was hurt. There was no reason to put him back in the starting rotation. That is another David Ross thing, and I will let Matt come back and address that with me, okay? Dansby Swanson. Since August 1st, the last two months of the season, the home stretch, this is what Dansby Swanson signed up for, to play in big games, to hit in big games, to be the guy in big games. He batted 
218, and we all know that's a flattering 218 because I recall one, one significant hit that Dansby Swanson has occurred in the last two months. He's let this team down again and again and again. And for whatever reason, whenever I have talked about it, I get a lot of heat from our listeners and Cubs fans because those two guys are untouchable. I'm not going to criticize Mike Talkman, who was playing in Korea last year because he didn't have a great September. I'm not going to criticize guys like Justin Steele, who carried the team all year and then had two bad starts, and, and so he quote-unquote collapsed. I'm going to criticize the guys that didn't do jack you-know-what and pooped down their leg for two straight months, okay? It's ridiculous. Yes, the Marlins 33 and 13 in one run games, four and overs. The Cubs ultimately was the difference. But those two men let us down. And I don't care what they do in April next year, assuming that Stroman's back. I, I don't care what he does in May. I don't care what uh, Swanson does in June. I will not be able to look those guys in the eyes if I see them in person until I see them deliver in big boy time when it counts. I'm tired of the wins above replacement stuff. What does it matter? Down the stretch, he let the team down. Now we get into tonight's ball game. Another pathetic performance. Marcus Stroman did not even compete tonight. He did not even give the Cubs a chance. He showed no inklings of any sort of competitive spirit. He was terrible. And then when the Cubs rallied late, they rallied late. A big base hit by Seiya Suzuki. And you know what, Seiya? I hope you don't lose any sleep over the drop ball the other night because I forgot about it. I, I, I'm done with it. You did your job. You showed me some character this season. And I, and I can't wait to see what you do next year. Dansby Swanson, two on, one out, lefty, A.J. Minter, 2-0 count. Swanson, 0 for, 0 for the night, 1 for the series. Hasn't had a big hit for the Cubs since 1994. 2-0 pitch, middle-middle, routine, 6-4. Three, and that felt like the dagger in the Chicago Cubs 2023 season. And look, I will say it again. I am not saying that those two are the reason why the Cubs are where they are, but they could have been the reason why the Cubs are in the postseason. I expected more from those guys, and they didn't deliver. And Marcus Stroman, yeah, is there a little bit extra ammo for me because of the way he handled his contract extension with Jed Hoyer and threw Jed Hoyer under the bus and was liking all these tweets about getting extended and then basically hasn't had wood get one good outing since? Yes, you're gosh dang right there is because I don't like that. That's not right. You pitch and you do your job and you let the finances take care of yourself. <sighs> Man, am I frustrated. Somebody says, you just, here, here's this one. You just hate Stro. No, I hate losing. Okay. I have no, I, I was as complimentary as anybody to Marcus Stroman when he was pitching well. I don't like guys that don't deliver. Okay. And look, I'll be the first to admit it. These last few starts, that's more on the Cubs management than it is Marcus Stroman. He shouldn't have been out there. He shouldn't have been out there. He should have been used in the, in the bullpen. Matt was on that. I was on that. But it doesn't matter. You still got to go out and compete. He did not even compete. Jamison Tyone, who's been awful la all, all, all season, the last two starts when the Cubs really needed it, he competed his tail off. Marcus Stroman didn't do any of that. So that's my frustration with that. The game itself... Cubs never never really felt like they were in it. You never felt like they were going to win anyways on Thursday. When you have the, the Braves beat back-to-back -back days, you have to win one of them because the Atlanta Braves are the best team in baseball, and typically they're going to put together a good performance. Uh, there's so many there's so many avenues we can go. Uh, I did a little homework today, and I came up with 17 games. Uh, throughout the 2023 season that I thought the Chicago Cubs not only could have won, but should have won. Um, and three of those were against the Miami Marlins, who will be uh, going into the postseason. But, um, you know, it, it – yeah, I'm just looking at these comments. I'm going all the all the place. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, post this because it's not appropriate. But the guy said, "Sam, we're paying Jamison sixty million. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about, Drew, is that even though Jamison Tyone was brutal in the biggest moments this season, he at least competed. Marcus Stroman has not done that at all recently, nor has Dansby Swanson. That's my point. That's my point. Okay. We also know the elephant in the room." 
as Matthew tweets, uh, uh, posts right here. He says, 17 games that we sh- should have won means one thing, poor management. We will have the whole offseason to discuss David Ross. Everybody knows how I feel about David Ross. I have felt this way about David Ross since before a pitch was thrown in the 2023 season. The reason I've laid off of it is I actually thought David Ross has done a better job as the season progressed. And I do, I do have empathy for him with this bullpen situation because it's an absolute disaster. And unfortunately, I don't think, I don't think that. David Ross is going to get fired. So I don't like to talk about it because it's like almost like leading you guys on. I just don't think it's going to happen. Do I think it should happen? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. But I don't think it is. And so I don't really want to talk about that. A um, couple more things and we'll move on. This is a good segue to our next segment. Cubs sweeping Brewers. I got news for you. It's not going to matter even if they do. So um, they're in really big trouble. Uh, and we're going to talk about the the entire postseason landscape and why today and this week was so damaging for the Cubs. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. Sleeper has become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users in 2022. At Sleeper, it's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memories. Sleeper is now offering up to 100 times payout for up to eight pick contests. Choose as many as eight players that you like and pick more or less of your favorite baseball stats like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Use promo code Locked On and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. If you're a real trooper, you'll check out the Cubs playing the Milwaukee Brewers at 710 on Friday. And you can listen to every pitch with the Cubs hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. On the SXM app, search Cubs or tune into channel 844 to catch the Cubs all season long on Sirius XM. We are back here on Locked On Cubs. I hope everybody is enjoying their Thursday night or their Friday, but guess what? It doesn't really matter because the Chicago Cubs season is dwindling and coming to an end. Why is that? Well, the Cubs went into this week. They needed to match the Miami Marlins for whatever they did. The the Marlins won one game. The Cubs needed to win one game. If the Cubs, if the Marlins won two, the Cubs needed to win two. The Chicago Cubs are 0 and 3. And the Miami Marlins are on the cusp right now. They are in a rain delay leading in the ninth inning of going two and one. So the only way the Cubs would be able to get to the postseason at this point would be to, I believe they would have to sweep the Brewers and the Marlins would have to lose two of three to the Pirates or the Cubs win two of three of the Brewers and the Marlins get swept by the Pirates. And then I think technically the Cubs could sweep the Brewers. And then if the Diamondbacks got swept by the Astros, that would be a way in as well. Um, None of those three things are going to happen. The Chicago Cubs season um, is virtually done. And look, As I said, there's a lot of blame to go around. Why did I pick Marcus Stroman and Dansby Swanson today? Because that's just been a thing that I felt for a really long time. And I thought tonight was a really good example of it. But there's a lot of blame to go around. When you collapse like this, on September 12th, the Chicago Cubs playoff odds were 90%. I believe now it is about 10% percent maybe even less when you have that big of a collapse in 15 16 days there's a lot to blame jamer candelario after his first about 10 games for the cubs was completely awful completely awful that trade that's why sometimes guys like if you watch us in the offseason, I'm very apprehensive about pounding my table. let's trade for that guy let's extend that guy i mean we extended ian happ he didn't You know, Ian Happ had a very average season. Everybody wanted to pound the table for the Marcus Stroman extension. Praise be that we didn't make that, right? And then everyone wanted to trade for Jamer. And I'm not saying it wasn't the right move. I'm not saying that. It's easy to say that in hindsight. They wanted wanted to make a statement, and they did. He did not help this Cubs team very much. He helped them for about a week. About a week. Jake Berger, the other third baseman on the trade market, uh, he, he, he's helped the Marlins much more than Jamer Candelario's helped the Cubs. We all know that this really comes down to managing in the bullpen. But I just wanted to 
really emphasize some guys that didn't step up because there are so many guys that did. And I said that it's, it's, it's how frustrating is it to waste a season like they did from Jan Gomes, one of the best offenses season Jan's yet seasons Jan Gomes has ever had. Cody Bellinger, the resurgence we were all dreaming of, we received, right? Seiya Suzuki gets benched for a couple of games and comes back and is the second or third hitter in all the major leagues the last two months. That should have been the biggest story in Cubs land leading to the postseason and beyond, and instead it wasn't good enough. We had questions about could Justin Steele take the next step. He was an all-star pitcher. Adbert Auzelay showed flashes showed flashes of being an elite closer in the major leagues. He's still got some work to do. They, Julian Merriweather, who was kind of an afterthought waiver claim, became one of the most steady Cubs relievers. There was so many, so many positive stories and so many great things that happened in the 2023 Cubs season that got us to playing very important baseball. And that's why it stings even more. To have a run differential in the mid-90s and to not make the postseason. All these things sting. And, you know, I said the, per the, the, the perfect storm thing I said yesterday. I stand by that. And I remember just a few weeks ago, I came on this very show in this exact same spot where I record every day. And the Cubs lost three or four to Arizona. But they, if you remember, they won the Sunday game. And I was recording Sunday night. And I said, this isn't a collapse. Cubs lost three out of four. Relax a little bit. Relax a little bit. Let's go into Colorado, take two of three, win a game in Arizona. There's no collapse. And after I said that, after I said that, they completely collapsed. Two of three in Colorado, two terrible losses. Sweep in Arizona, one of the worst losses of the season Saturday night. Come home, two out of three to a Pittsburgh team. The Thursday game, brutal. Then, to their credit, they came back and fought their way to sweep Colorado. And then they go into Atlanta and not only get swept, but Tuesday and Wednesday, two of the most excruciating, painful losses you could draw up. That's it. And there's a lot of what-ifs. There's a lot of luck involved, and it is a nuisance that the Marlins are going to end up getting in with their 33-13 and 1-1 record. There's a lot of flukiness in that. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go to sleep tonight, put my head on the pillow, and say this team made their own bet. They made their own bed, and they got to live with it. There's a lot of positives in the 2023 season. By March, all this will be a wrap. Hopefully the Braves just run through the playoffs so none of it matters because at the end of the day, it's about winning World Series championships. And I think we all know that even if the Cubs got in, that probably wasn't a realistic possibility this year. So I think we'll all feel better, better as fans if the Braves go and do their thing and you know they play the, the Orioles or somebody or the, or, the, or the Astros or the Rays or whoever they play, and it's just two powerhouses that get together. And then the Cubs have serious work to do before the 2024 season to get this bad taste out of all of our mouths. But um, – we're going to have some fun with the last segment, interact with you, talk a little bit about the show, uh, because, uh, you know, what else is there to do? But first, this episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Need fresh groceries for the week, but don't have the time to go to the store? Try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers. Get 50% off your DoorDash order, your first DoorDash order, up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONMLB at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20 plus zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONMLB. Don't forget, that's code LOCKEDONMLB for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. We are back on Locked On Cubs, and it is that time of the live show where it is your time. Ask me some questions. Let's talk. Um, I'm going to close the show with a little tribute to our fans and our listeners. Uh, I, I've never wrote, rid a, a, wrote a roller coaster quite like this one this year. And, and I think that I, I used to think – for most of the year that I was just biased because I'm recording after every game. So when they win, it feels extra great. And when they lose, it feels extra bad. So maybe I was exaggerating when I said that this season was one of the craziest I've ever seen. 
I don't feel that way anymore. I think many people, even those that have watched the, 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 the games as long as my dad has for years and years and years, would admit that this season, that this season is one of the top three or four craziest Cubs seasons from April. Very average April. Felt like you left a lot of food on the table. May, disaster. Brutal losses, brutal month. June, very average. July and August, two of the best months of the last 10 years. Well, no, not 10. Of the last five years for the Chicago Cubs. Just unbelievable highs. The Morrell walk-off. The, the, the talkman Rob play. The eight-game winning streak. It was unbelievable. And then a September, excuse my language, a September from hell. Never seen anything like that. Uh, let's take some questions. Um, let's see. We got. Let's see what we got. You know, Strowman, uh, Strowman should just be traded in the offseason at this point. He'll opt back in, and I wouldn't be opposed to exploring a trade. I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of done with Marcus Strowman, if you couldn't tell. Uh, Brian. Hey, Sam, appreciate everything you do to be able to come on here at times like this and mainly keep your composure and deliver what we need is remarkable. Thanks for all that you do. Brian, I appreciate all your comments, man. You're very nice to me. I don't think I've kept my composure in a lot of episodes, but that's kind of the fun of it, isn't it? Uh, Richard says, Destro opt-in, absolutely. Anybody that gives him more money than he would get, that general manager should be let go. Let's see what we got. I, I see a lot of good things here. Let's see. Here we go. Chris, if Horton and Brown are ready for next year, do you think the Cubs will give a serious offer to Yamamoto? Um, I really, Chris, I, if I'm honest with you, I haven't put my brain there yet because I've been in pennant race mode. Um, I, 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 I have, I, it's a great question. Um, I, I'd have to say TBD on that for me. M my guess would be probably not. Um, I, I think the Cubs are going to really work on investing in a in, in a big in, in a trade for a big time offensive bat. I think I think they're going to try and keep Bellinger, and then I think they're going to try and go get like another superstar bat, and then see what happens from there. Because I think Cade Horton's going to be legit. Um, Kevin says, "Will the Cubs sign Bellinger?" It's a million dollar question. If I had that answer, I'd be making a lot of money, Kevin. It's a million dollar question. It's going to be heavy negotiations, high drama at the winter meetings. He'll get a lot of offers. If the Cubs bring him back, great. If they don't, they're going to have to really, really replace him with the assets that they have. And don't let Tommy Ricketts tell you there are no assets because I was at Wrigley on Friday and I was at Wrigley on Saturday, and that entire area is making a whole bunch of money. So they should have the the, the money should be fl flowing. COVID is over and these guys should be ready to spend now they may not be able to spend directly on free agents because the class is weak but they could trade for a guy like Juan Soto and extend him because they have plenty of money to do such a thing uh I I'm not really sure how to pronounce this username, but yes, let's face it though. This team just isn't equipped to go toe to toe with the best teams in the NL in the playoffs. That's the easy thing to say, man. It is, but in July, they took two out of three from Atlanta. They took two out of three from Baltimore. They took two out of three from Tampa. They took two out of three from Milwaukee. They faded at the wrong time. This version of the Cubs, of course, isn't a playoff team. But the frustrating part is the Phillies last year won 86 games and backed into the playoffs and then got hot at the right time and made the World Series. You just never know in the postseason. I think that's the easy thing for us all to say that'll help us sleep at night saying, hey, they weren't going there, going anywhere anyway. But you never know, right? You know, Albert Ozlai comes back healthy, right? The, the, the Ozlai and lighter stuff really ruined the season. We talked about that yesterday. Um, that that's what crushed him. You know, if those guys, if I was like came back and was the, the July, I was I, I, you're telling me you'd bet against them against the Brewers. I don't know with, with, with steel and, and Hendricks and, and Wicks, you never know. So, you know, it's the easy thing to say, but you want to get in the dance. That's why you play 162 games. You want to get in the dance. Caden says PCA needs more time in the minors. Yeah. Look, I mean, there's two ways to look at the PCA thing. Uh, it was a complete disaster offensively in a very short period of time. The minor league experts will tell you that that's how it's been at him with every level. So you want to give him time to adjust. I think it's unfair to judge him offensively until he gets a full you know, allotment of plate appearances. But it was a little bit disappointing to see how overmatched he was in the beginning. Um, 
I, it's what I, it's what I just said, T Manny. But it, Sam, it's really the bullpen that cost him a playoff spot. I agree with that ultimately. But there are some other things that could have that, that could have happened as well. Um, CHR thirteen. In your opinion, how dumb of a decision was it for David Ross to trash talk Pittsburgh, knowing that they have to help us into the postseason? It's almost not even about the the, the postseason thing, CHR thirteen, but just how you handle losing. You don't call out another opponent, especially one that's not even that much worse than you. It was dumb. It's in the top five for Ross. He's had a lot of them. His his interactions all season with the, with, with the media have been very poor um, and have been something that has been kind of very off-putting for me. But we're going to have an entire episode dedicated to the Skipper of Chicago, the Chicago Cubs, so I'm not going to really go there. I got time for a couple more before I uh, end the regular season, uh, as crazy as that sounds. Um, Ian Happ, major choke job this series. I, I, I didn't really see much of that. I mean, he dropped the ball today, but, you know, he had a homer yesterday. Um, you know, this is who Ian Happ is, but there's, uh, you know, I, I, th th that, that isn't my takeaway of this series. Um, here we go. Here's a good question. How often do you guys make episodes in the off season? So I think through October, we're still every day. And then once the off season gets into full gear, we are three days a week. I think that's how it goes. So we'll still be around. Hopefully the following that we have gotten during the season will, I, you know, I know, I know humans don't love listening to Cubs talk when there's snow on the ground and all those things. But hopefully some people will stick around because Matt and I do some fun, creative things in the off season. We play games. We do, we do segments to keep things fresh. We love trivia games and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, hopefully people will stick around, but yeah, five, I think it's five a week through October. And then we get into three days a week. Once the off season, um, goes into it. Um, when do this is, these are good questions. When do off season show starts? We don't take any breaks, Jason. We'll be recording Sunday into Monday. We're, we don't take a break. We'll go Sunday into Monday. We start, we start recapping this thing right away. It's, it's locked on Cubs for a reason, man. Daily podcast. We live by that stuff. So, uh, I got time for one more. Here's a good one. Ford McD says, Sam, do you know what, what the ruling is behind this Mets Marlin delay? Yeah. I've heard some rumors that maybe it goes retroactive back to one Oh, I don't care. I really don't. I'm done for it, Nick D. Tomorrow night, I'm going out. I'm having a nice time. I'm going to hang out with my friends, do something fun. I am done. I don't know the answer, and I don't want to know the answer. How is that? Um, all right. Listen, we had a great time on this show. Um, I wish I was coming to you with better news. Uh, anyone that wants to say in the comments, I was overly negative. I don't know how much more negative, how much more positive you could be when the season, you know, when you've collapsed like this, um, I I want to say the 2023 season, even though it was such a roller coaster that ended badly, was amazing um, for the show. And I could speak for Matt on that. I mean, going to Cubs games and and getting recognized by people and having people want to take pictures and things like that. It's really been surreal. And it's, it's been really, really fun to, to get to know certain people and interact with people. And in a very kind of unique way, it feels like it's like my own, our own community. And, you know, people DM me and ask me questions. And we talk Cubs and I've got to know people. And it has been um, a really fun time getting a chance to, to do this show. And, and, and I can't wait to keep it going because this is at the end of the day, this is what I love to do. I love to watch the Cubs. I love to talk about it. I love to try and bring my personality into it. And it feels like what I'm supposed to be doing. And you guys have been more than supportive and, and backing me up. So despite the results and despite a miserable collapse, um, it's been very fun uh, covering this team with you guys and with Matt. Of course. So that'll wrap it up, but we'll see you Sunday night. I'll see you. We'll have a Monday episode. It just won't be about any regular season stuff uh, in the future unless unless a miracle happens, which you never know, but uh, don't hold your breath. Shout out to the everydayers who are with us all five episodes throughout the week, and you can become an everydayer by checking us out each and every weekday. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked on Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button for the algorithm. We are also on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts and streaming on SiriusXM. I am Sam Olber, and this is Locked on Cubs. Have a great weekend, everybody. Get away from the game of baseball.